Lord, we thank you. We welcome you into this place, this sanctuary. We also welcome you into our hearts, into this place, Lord God. Fill it to overflowing so that we can give back to you what you rightly deserve in worship and in love today. And every single day, we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome everyone and welcome everyone online. Let's worship together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good to me. You turn my We 
are yours, Lord. We give you glory. Hallelujah.
So, so 
space your love won't fail And I'll trade all my pure peace of mind All my heaviness for burdens light And this will be my song Sing it all day long That you are always good And when the day is through I am left with you Are always you Are always good I said my eyes on perfect peace You'll finish what you started in me My heart will be in a free And I'll trade all my peace for peace of
this day, God. Now we ask you all to just in the same spirit to have a seat and receive the word of God from our pastor. And if there is FYI, turn your attention to FYI. time this morning worship amen, amen. Yes. hallelujah god is good you know hey welcome this morning it's so good to have each and every one of you here with us this morning uh to be a part of the service those watching online those who are here joining us um i believe that it is a good day amen i know i say that all the time but i think that we have to you know there's sometimes it doesn't seem like a good day it doesn't feel like a good day it doesn't act like a good day and so we have to declare that it's a good day Make that declaration that, God, you are faithful. You're still working in my life. I'm, I'm following you. you. You got good stuff in my life. You, you have things you're working in, in my problems, in my good things, all those kind of stories, because that's the faithfulness that we see with God moving in our life. So anyways, hey, um, but before I get into the word, before we give some of the announcements of things that are taking place, we want to take an opportunity to honor God in our giving. Um, yeah, I, I, I say this. You know, each time that I've been up here, but I, I really mean it. Thank you for supporting the work, what God is doing. In, in a few moments, uh, we're going to show you some of the pictures that we got in from Indonesia from the work that we've been supporting there, as well as um, uh, one from India. And uh, so we're excited about what God is doing there, but we are so grateful for what you do, grateful for the time that you take to honor God in your giving, and, and uh, whether it's getting here at this service right now live or you're doing it online, as so many people will do, or those of you who are watching uh, doing the same thing, thank you. But what I want to do is this, and I was always taught this as a, as a child, is you pray over your giving. You don't just throw something in a bucket, or you don't just say, but you're, on, you're dedicating it because it is worship. That God, I'm dedicating what I'm giving, what I've sowed. So those of you that have been giving, we're praying over that right now. Amen? If you're giving right now, we're praying over that right now. If you're giving online, we're praying over that right now because God is faithful to meet and supply. He knows and he's going to supply because I, I've just always learned in my life that he's the supplier. He provides and meets each and every need of our life. So Father, we thank you today. And for those who have given, those who are connecting, as we give and we worship you in our giving, it is worship. And we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity we have to give honor and glory unto you. And I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you that for your blessing upon each giver. Lord, you know every need, every situation. We ask that your blessing and giving back into their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, hey, while you're, the ushers are coming, and I just want to go and share a few things that are taking place. Uh, one is our Easter service that is happening on Easter. We're excited about what's taking place. We have these cards here. We'd love for you to pick them up so that you can hand them out. Uh, keep one for yourself so you know the times and stuff, but also uh, to be able to invite somebody else to come and be a part of this service. Uh, it's going to be a great service at the Union County Performing Arts Center, downtown Rawway. We are excited about it, as we always are. It's going to be a great service, so make sure that you make plans to be a part of that couple other quick things that are taking place and just want to remind you, um, and that is, um, I know right now we have the word for today is, is uh, the, the little devotional that we have. Um, that is ending as far as for us having the publication for it, but there is an access for you to be able to go online and you can sign up for that and be a part of that. So if you are uh, a person that normally gets, picks up the word for today, um, I, it may be actually in there. I'm not sure in the back of it. But we will have that in just uh, the next week, about a couple weeks. We'll have it in the Blue Room if you want to continue getting that. Uh, you'll need to do it that way. It's all online. Most all devotionals now are that way anyways. Most of you are using online devotionals. But if you want that one particularly, you'll have to do that uh, and check it out that way. Um, also, just keep in mind also, the, I know the registrations had opened for a uh, while for their, uh, their summer retreat, as well as the uh, FMO, the men's um, retreat that was taking place. Um, if you didn't sign up for that, if there's still spots, check it out. Be a part of that. Connect with that. Uh, the men's breakfast is actually happening this coming Saturday, so 9 a.m., so come out. Guys, you're invited. You don't, you know, just be there. It's good. It's a great time. Uh, kind of hang out. And then, um, so anyways, all those other things are taking place. I just want to just uh, also just take a few moments before I speak to share some pictures. We did last week, talked about Cuba, showed you some things from Cuba as well as from Haiti. Um, and so there was actually, I found out there was like one box that was still on its way to getting to Haiti. That has arrived and it's being distributed for the kids. So again, thank you for your support. And as, as your regular giving that's just what it, those are the things that happen as, as you're giving you're supporting not only just local things and helping things here and what takes place uh, but you're also doing things in other countries and so you may never travel to Indonesia but you know what you have traveled to Indonesia and you have traveled to Cuba both with what you're doing so I'm just gonna ask Brandon just throw a couple pictures we have up there I think we start off with in, yeah in Indonesia this was the the church that um uh, the new plant is on the island of Papua 
which is a new uh, the island of Papua New Guinea, the, the western part of it, the Indonesian part. And, uh, and so this is one of the, the, the piece of land they had. Well, actually, they're, they're walking to it. They have like monsoon seasons, and this is the monsoon season. The season they were putting the, the foundation stone in the, in the ground after they purchased it. And this was the original, it's a, it's a small structure, it's a small outreach they're doing in this region. So it doesn't look like much here, but you'll see that it just transitions quickly uh, as a, a, a meeting place. And then they have a bigger building they're also doing also ministry-wise. And so as it just kind of, they literally are carving it out into this like very jungly type area. Um, and they're, you know, they're having to put electric in there and they're putting toilets in there. Um, and this is in that area that they're building and, and being able to have a place for uh, the, the people to be able to reach uh, the, the villages and things around there. So you help make that happen by us being able to buy the property for them. We've helped them send money to be able to help put that. This is actually a motorcycle that we contributed toward other ministries uh, for them to be able to get around. Uh, that is a big thing. That was actually months ago. I completely forgot that, about that to show it. And so this was another way that we helped be a part of making a difference for the pastors, local pastors, to be able to get around because everybody has them there. Uh, it's the quickest way to get around. And I think then the next way, I believe we type, step over into, yeah, India. And so I was there about seven years ago. Uh, this is a picture from when I was there. Um, and I, it was like probably 110 degrees that day. I ended up getting heat stroke and had to stay in bed for a day after this. It was so hot there. Uh, but we were out there and we dedicated this plot of land for a future church building that was going to be planted. Uh, and so we've helped give toward that as we supported this ministry. And this is the picture of that church now. And it's all done. You helped make that happen. <clears throat> so they are reaching that area. They have a school there for children, all kind of different things, but this is a, a local church. from So you help make that happen in your giving. So if you don't think that your giving is doing anything, you're wrong. You are changing lives around the world. Thank you for your support. Thank you for what you do. This, and we want you to see this is what you're doing. Lives are being touched. And you're welcome to go to any of the, we can give you the address. You're welcome to visit these at any time. If you're in, if you're in Indonesia, or Cuba, or uh, India, uh, and in Haiti, and uh, Kenya, different places that we've supported. And so there they are if you'd be able to do it. But thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to dive right into the word this morning. Um, you know, we, we did a, about six weeks talking about um, God is a, the promise keeper. And um, looking at the covenants. And then, so I, I added on to that because I just kind of felt that I wanted to add a little bit more to it and, and finish that series out and to talk about literally walking out those promises. So the last couple of weeks, we, we did that. And so today, I want to wrap it up in just this, this one last thing that I just wanted to share. And we're getting ready to move into Easter. It's hard to believe that Easter is right here just a few weeks ago. And so it's going to be a busy week. I know Pastor Francois will be here in a couple of weeks. And We'll be sharing some, some really cool things, too. And, and uh, so before all that, I just want to get this into there. But I want to look at Psalms chapter 145, verse 18. And it says here in this verse, You draw near to those who call out to you, listening closely, especially when their hearts are true. You know, talking about the fact that God says that when, we, when we're in a relationship with him, that our heart is near him. And, it's, and you know, sometimes, well, I just, feel, I just feel distant from God. I just feel, I don't feel like he's close. Then, then there's got to be the point I have to look at my life and say, where, where am I missing inviting him into my life? Because this is, you know, this is a promise of God. He says, when you draw near to him, when, God's saying, when we draw near to him, that, his, his, that we're close to him. He says, you, you draw near to those who call out to you, listening closely, especially when their hearts are true. When I'm calling out to God, he says, when you call out to him, he's like right there. See, it's the thing of understanding in our life. We feel, sometimes we can feel, I've been there. There's times that I say, well, God, are you, I, I know you're here, but you just don't feel very close. I'm, I'm sure none of you have ever experienced that in your life before. But the reality is, we go through those times. And so, but when this, when we look at the promise, and the, the thing we were talking about the last couple of weeks is getting the word of God. And there's like thousands of promises in God's word. Find those ones that apply to our life and holding on to those. God, this is what your promise is. And God is a promise keeper, not a promise breaker, we've been saying over all these weeks. And when we understand the promises of God like this, it says God, that, that God draws near to us and we call out to him when we're listening closely, especially when our hearts are true, when our hearts are open and receptive and when our hearts are inviting the spirit of God into our life. He says he's there that we can begin to experience within our life. And so that's a promise. And so if I embrace that promise, now think about this. If I embrace that promise that God is near to me, that, he, that when I call, he's gonna be there for me. How does that affect my life? 
How does that affect my decisions? How does that affect my, my outlook on things, even whether they're good or bad? How, how does that play within my life? You know, as Christians, I think we all can agree the fact that, you know, God is everywhere. We, we see it from Scripture. We believe that. But, you know, at the same time, there's times that we don't believe that he's right here with me. I wouldn't say that we don't believe it, but we just think, well, I wish God would come closer. I wish God would work here. We, we kind of make it look like he's way off in a far distance, but the reality is, just not, you know, when we put those things in question, that he's really right here right now, that, that he's everywhere, we feel sometimes, but right here in my situation. People talk about, we see, oh yeah, God's moving over here, God's moving over here, all these kind of scenarios, but the reality is that, that he, he's saying that when we call upon him, that, that he is right there for us. You say, well, yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying, Pastor, but I don't, I don't feel like he's in my life. I don't see him moving in my life. So when, we, when that becomes the part, what happens, we have a tendency to dismiss God's presence in our life, the, the power of his word, the power of his promises. We don't see it really coming alive in our life because we feel that, yeah, God is here, he's everywhere, but he's not here with me right now. We feel that there's a distance. We feel that there's a disconnect within that when the reality is as if I just open my heart, he's right there. So to see, if, if, I, don't, if I don't put it in my, in my mind of understanding that God, your, your word says that you are here because faith is trusting and believing and we, even when we don't feel it. Even when we don't see it. You know, there's sometimes that, you know, that we just don't feel, you know, I don't feel married. If, listen, if you're married and you say you don't feel married, the, if, you're, if the ring is still there, you're still married. Even if it is a struggling day today. Hello, amen? So sometimes we do that with God. Well, I just don't feel God's here. That doesn't mean he's not there just because we don't feel it. So anyways, as we start closing out talking about this, I, I want to look at the story of a guy by the name of Gideon. And Gideon in the Old Testament, he would become a judge uh, in Israel. It was a time of the judges. It was a king. There was, there was no king at this point. And so this was kind of in that time. And, and so there were uh, judges that were a part over there. And actually, he ends up becoming like actually considered one of the best judges in Israel, the greatest judge that Israel ever had. But as we look, you know, so here's this guy, Gideon, who becomes this great person, does some great things in Israel. But when he first walks into the story, what happens is we sit there and we look at Gideon, we find out Gideon looks like he, he steps onto the scene as a very timid, weak person, someone that you probably wouldn't expect to be a great leader, someone that you wouldn't expect to be a deliverer, because he, he was. He helped deliver uh, Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. And yet, in the very beginning, we look at Gideon, and we don't see that being the case. And, and so the difference between the Gideon that walked on the stage timid and weak and the Gideon that does all these things that God does in his life later is the presence of God in his life. Now, this is Old Testament. It's not like today where we have a personal relationship with Jesus, the Spirit of God living on the inside of us and abiding within us. And so we have to understand the difference in there. But for Gideon to understand that God was with him changed everything in his life. You know, and so here Gideon, as I said, he, he's living this time in the time of the judges and here in Israel with no king, no centralized government, just judging over the 12 tribes that are there. And, but Israel is also in a place of disobedience. In fact, in Judges 21, 25, it says, in those days, there were no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. That's a mess. Think about in your house, if you got more than you, and everybody just did what they thought was right, what they thought was good, and what they thought needed to be done, and what lights need to be on, and when the heat, you know, you know, one wants the heat on, one wants the air conditioning on. You got a problem, all right? Electric company's loving you. Gas company's loving you. But you can't, we know that you just can't function when everybody just does what they think is right. And this was the state that Israel was in. And so they're in this place where they believe that just everybody's doing what that was right in their own eyes. And so as a result of their sin, it's like they just stepped out. You know, God just, you know, just steps out of, out of his protection. They're, they're, they stepped out from underneath the umbrella of God's protection. So here they are. 
Now there's this band of Midianites, and the scripture talks about the fact for seven years they are, they're just constantly bombarding them. And these, this, this nomadic tribe, these Midianites, they would come in and they would, they would rob them and ravage all their food and their grain. And, and Israel is struggling because everything they get, just the moment that they get everything, here comes these bands of Midianites come in and they just, they're stealing all the food, they're stealing all the grain, they're waiting for the harvest to be done, they're waiting till they thresh all the wheat, and then they swoop in and they take it all. And so no doubt there's hunger, there's all kinds of issues and problems going on. You know, the people are afraid because they're doing whatever they're doing, you know, to the, to the people. And, and so they're hiding, they're hiding in caves, they're hiding in places to try to thresh and take care of the grain to protect the food that they have. All this stuff is going on. And in the middle of all that, we find Gideon doing the same exact thing. He's hiding in a wine press so that he's, and he's got wheat and he's threshing the wheat. And normally what you would do is, and I don't, I don't know, any, any grain farmers here? I don't, I don't think so. But, you know, you take the wheat or the grain, whatever, and through a process that you, you, when it's dry, you throw it up, and the wind, for there, the wind would take the chaff, the outer piece that you wouldn't eat, and blows it away, and the grain falls down. You keep doing it till there's no more holes in, in the grain. So now you can go out and make your own bread. See, like, now you know what to do. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> but Gideon's got just the little bit that he has, He's hiding, trying to, but it doesn't work without wind, and he's doing whatever he's doing to try to make this happen. And in the middle of that, an angel shows up right next to Gideon. So many of you probably know this story. I know the women's ministry did a great, uh, with Lonnie Arcee, did a great series on Gideon, if you were part of that. It was really good, because I know we talked about it. I had talk, I was speaking about, a little bit about Gideon at that time, and she did this great series. And I love the story of Gideon because here's this guy that you never would think to be able to do much of anything but just hide the rest of his life, and God uses him to do great things. And God comes upon, and the angel comes upon Gideon, and he says to Gideon, he says, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior, or, or mighty man of valor, depending on which translation you read. Mighty warrior. He doesn't quite fit the description of a mighty warrior as he's hiding from the, from the Midianites, okay? And so this is this picture that, looking at it, so he, you know, he told Gideon that he would be the next one, he would be the one to be able to, to be, uh, for Israel to bring victory away from the Midianites. And, and so, but Gideon's like the guy hiding, so he's, he's totally in fear, he's totally doubting the whole thing. Uh, but, but God does use Gideon in a great way, and it all began with an angel of the Lord telling a young man that was frightened, hiding, God is with you. See, that was the thing that changed everything in Gideon's life. And we, we look at the point and understand that God is saying, I am with you. So we look at, we look at our situations. Maybe, maybe you're hiding from things in your own life and struggling with things in your own life. And, and, and what God is saying here that we see for Gideon, for the example, that the moment that he invites the presence of God into him and what he's doing, he was able to do whatever it was that God called him to do. And God looks at him and says, now he doesn't say this, but it's not like God's blind. He, he knows that he's hiding, but he looks at him and he says, see, you are a mighty, you're a mighty warrior. As he's hiding down here away from everything. Doesn't quite look like a mighty warrior, but God saw something in him, put something in Gideon's life that this mighty warrior, and you and I, no doubt, uh, you know, as we look at what Gideon went through, and how the, the, the change was the fact that the Lord is with, was with him. The thing is that we've all been in that place where we felt like, hey, God, you're not that close to me. Where are you? He's not, but, you know, he's not just, you know, he's everywhere, but he's not, he's not here with me. He's, he's helping that person over there. He's helping the person at church. And, oh, I heard their testimony. That's, that's nice for you, but you don't know my situation. You don't know what I'm going through. It'd be nice. Maybe God would do something for me. Maybe God would meet mine. Maybe that's where you are right now in those situations. But, you know, the angel came to Gideon and said, the Lord is with you. And so Gideon, he did, you know, he just, for someone that's like, you know, hiding, he's, he's also a little ticked off a little bit. He's, he's, got some, he's got some things going on inside his heart. What we see is right here, he says, the angel of the Lord says to, you know, him, hey, you're the, the Lord is with you. And Gideon said, okay, and this is my paraphrase part, if God is with us, why are we suffering? If God is with us, where are all the miracles that we've heard about a long time ago that nothing's happening here? God delivering them and opening, parting the Red Sea, all these different things. But, but why, why are we sitting here having to hide out to be able to protect our food? And so he said, basically says, you know, now it looks like, hey, God's abandoned us. Sometimes we want to Ask the same question in our life. If, if God is with us, where is, why am I in this mess? 
Why is this situation going on? You may, you may know what I'm talking about. I think we, I've been there. I'm sure I have too. Why is this all happening? Why am I dealing with all these scenarios and situations or whatever? And so what I, what, what's interesting is this. You know, he, Gideon's asking all these questions, but the angel never answers any of those questions. But you know what he does do? The angel says, it's okay. I'm sending you. I'm sure Gideon wasn't expecting that. Because he's, he's, he's wanting answers to the situation, and, and the angel says, that's okay, you know what? I got the answer, and the next answer is you. I'm sending you to help change this situation. I'm sending you to work in the midst of this situation. You know, it's okay to ask the why question, but what you'll find many times that God's response is that this is the action I'm challenging you to take. I want you to take a step. I want you to make a difference in the situation. You know, as a, as a pastor over the years, you know, I, if I counted all the times that someone came up and said, hey, pastor, you know, we need to do this or you need to do that or we should have this and you should have that. You know, God's been laying on my heart to tell you that we need to do that. And so finally, I, I kind of got a little smart in, in the sense of like thinking, wait a second, you know, you know, if God's talking to you, maybe you're the one that needs to step out and help make it happen. You know, it was so funny the moment that you said that, how quickly everyone begins to reverse. Well, I was just thinking maybe there's somebody that I, I can't do this. I don't have that. I don't have the ability. I, 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 I. But what I found when God's putting in our, our heart, maybe we're the one that's supposed to be a part of that to make it happen. And like Gideon, he's backpedaling, saying, but yeah, I know you're saying that, but you don't know the situation we're in. This, this is wrong, and God's abandoned us, and all these kind of scenarios, and all these kind of things. See, rather than dwelling on Israel's past, and all the sin, and all the things that the angel could have told Gideon, he says, this is what you'll do next. This is what you're going to do, Gideon. You're going to get out of this, hide out of this wine press, and you're going to do this. And the Bible says in Judges 6, 14, he says, the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have. And I'm thinking, if we look at what it is, what strength is he seeing there? Because we don't see it. But I love the fact that God sees stuff in us that we don't see in ourselves. See, when, when God is saying to Gideon, you go in the strength that you have, he sees something there that Gideon doesn't see. There's something that's there that Gideon's not seeing right now. He says, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. But Gideon's response was, and you know, this is kind of like the same Moses response. When God says, Moses, hey, I want you to go and deliver my people, he goes, ah, I don't speak too good. You know, I'm this, I'm that, all these things. So what does Gideon do? He says, well, you know, how could it be me? My, my, my family is the least in my tribe, and I'm the least in my family. He's saying, my family's low, but I'm even lower. In my family, I'm all the way down here. I am the least applicable the least qualified person that can do what you're asking me to do it's amazing so many times that's how we see ourselves when god taps us on the shoulder and says you know i want you to take this step i want you to encourage that person i want you to pray for that prayer i want you to step out and do this or or be a part of that or volunteer in this or help here whatever it is in our life that what's ever going on is that we don't say well no that's not me it's not me i can't do that but god knows what's in our life he knows what we can and can't do. And just like Gideon, he says, you go in the strength that you have. In other words, the strength that you have is enough because I'm with you. See, it's not about the great, us having, you and I having the great skills that we may have or whatever kind of that. We don't, it's, that's not the case. God uses our ability, works through our life, all those kind of scenarios. But the reality is this, it's, is that God, it's, we take what we have and then with God, all things are possible. Judges 6, 16 says, the Lord answered him. He says, I will be with you. I love this series. He said, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. So what he's saying, he says, listen, first off, number one, the fact I'm with you. So in your, I don't know, you know, we all go through scenarios and situations that we may look and say, this is so impossible. How is this going to change? And when I really embrace the verse we talked about in the very beginning or the other verses I'll give you, it's this understanding that God, as we embrace that, the fact is this, that you are able to take what I have and be able to open the door and meet the needs. That you, you're going to enable this to happen in a greater capacity, in a greater way. And so he says, I will be with you and you will strike all the Midians down. The truth is that Gideon was right exactly where God wanted him to be. 
He's that guy hiding out, thinking that there's no one thing that he could add to it, nothing that he could do. And so he calls us, you know, God, so Gideon's hiding here. He wasn't relying on his own personal skills to do what, what, what God wanted him to do. The fact is that God wanted Gideon to know, yeah, you don't have all the qualities. But with me, you have more than enough. It's this fact, it's like, God, you take my mess and you make something beautiful out of it. I thought the scripture in the Old Testament talks about he takes our, he takes our ashes and, and the things and he brings beauty out of it. He brings hope out of it. See, that's a, he gives us beauty for our ashes. And that's what he does in our life. You see, we, all we think is, oh, this is all I got. Gideon's like, oh, this, this is all I got. I ain't got not much. I ain't, how do I have a lot going on here? He says, God says, that's all I need. I just need, I just need you to take a step. Go in your own strength, he says. Your own, not, not, this, not your neighbor's strength or the person sitting next to you, the person that you look up to as a believer. Not in their, oh, if I could just be, if I could just be as spiritual as them. No, 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 no. God, you know, I used to run through that in the very, when I was pastoring. It was like I'd look at other pastors and say, man, they're so great and they speak so good. And then, you know, then there was opportunities at times to look, see their humanity, how the fact is they were, they were just kind of as messed up as I was. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but just as, as, as human as I was. The same struggles, the same inferiorities, the, the same like, I'm, I'm not that great. I, I'm not, a, you know, all, all the things that we tell ourselves. But the fact is, is that God meets us. He meets us where we are in our own strength. He says, just step up here with your own strength and then me combined with that and we can see great things take place. Because God calls us beyond our abilities always calls us beyond our abilities well I don't have the ability see Gideon didn't have the ability to do what he was being called to do but you know what with God he was able to do all that God did what he had and so you know my call when I when I received that when God just placed on my heart that call to pastor and I've shared it was the last thing in my mind that I ever had planned to ever do and I didn't think I had any ability to do it because I, I was the shy guy. I was the introvert. I was not a public speaker at all. I did, you know, I finally did the announcements and that was it. I, I would do some staff, you know, training stuff and help and things like that. But honestly, that was the last thing. I, you know, I, I, I didn't have all the, the educational background. I didn't have the experience as a public speaker. Nothing. And so when God calls us, we don't, it doesn't mean that we have arrived. We haven't got everything in our little suitcase that we need. All he needs is the availability. And so he calls us to do more than we're capable of doing in our own strength. You're always gonna, he's always going to tap you on the shoulder and say, I want, you to, I want you to step out in this area. I want you to believe for this in this area. It's always going to be bigger than what the capacity of your life is. It's always going to be beyond that. It's always going to be a step further. It's gonna, always going to be out of your reach because like this, if you can accomplish it, why do you need God? Faith is the fact that I don't have it all together. I don't have everything I need. But God, you told me to take a step. I'm taking a step, and I'm depending on you to see me through because together we're going to make this happen. Together, you know, you're going to work in my life, and, and I'm going to follow you, and we're going to meet this, and God, you're going to do this. He calls us to do more than we're capable of doing in our own strength because he wants us to rely on his strength. It's not relying on my own strength because that's the thing. If I can accomplish it, then I'm just, I'm, wow, Fred, you're, you're great, man. You're good. But the reality is Fred's not that good. Okay? And, then, and, don't, and you don't have to say, well, Pastor, no, you, you. no, no, I don't. Because the reality is that none of us have everything that we need. We don't have all the qualifications. And it's not about faking it till you're making it. It's just that, God, here's what I have. You take this and do what you can do with this. And he does. He takes the ashes and he makes something beautiful out of them. He takes the brokenness and breaks something, makes something whole out of those things. And that's exactly what he's doing with Gideon. In fact, in, in Zephaniah, uh, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, God says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's how it happens. That's what God does. You know, how many times I walk out here and I'm like, okay, God, and you know, I, I, I'm human. There's times, it's, you know, it's like, I'm like, okay, God, you got to do this. And I've done my part, but it's still, I'm still struggling. And watch God do. All he needs is just to take the step because it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit, 
and what he does in and through our life. But he needs us to take the step. He needs us to step out in faith. He needs to trust us. He, see, he needs us. If he wants to work in, in, in people's lives, he's going to do it through you because he wants to do that work through you and through me. And it's by his power, his presence. So whenever God calls you, he will be with you. It's God's presence that makes a difference in your life. Become, uh, become what it is. And so the angel comes to Gideon. And he says, he calls him a mighty warrior. And so here's this timid young guy, the least in his family, the least in his tribe, who is currently hiding from the Midianites, threshing wheat in secret in fear of these, these nomadic tribes that are coming through. And God looks at him and calls him a mighty warrior. God spoke to Gideon. What was he doing? God is speaking to Gideon's future, not to his past and not to his present. And when God tapped me on the shoulder, put me in, 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 in to step out to do what I'm doing, and honestly, I was like, like I said, I didn't have all the credential. I didn't have anything to do what I'm doing. And I struggled with that for a number of years because I, was like, I, didn't have the pro I didn't have the schooling. I didn't have all the training. I didn't have all the stuff that other pastors had. I would go to, you know, and I grew up my life, all my life in, in church. I was involved in ministry. Uh, I was involved in the Bible school, all kinds of different things. So I, I, I was always in doing all those things, but to step into the role of actually leading people and do, leading in all these kind of scenarios, I didn't. And I remember going to like in those early years, going to like, you know, pastors conferences and stuff, and let's, you know, and then I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, just smile and look like you know what you're talking, what's going on. Look like you just kind of, just like you belong here because you don't really belong here. <laughs> but God said, you belong here. And he looks at you and you're thinking, I don't have what it takes and what I'm having to do with my family or marriage or, or my job or what God's placed on my life. And you're looking at it thinking, there's no way. I don't have what I need. I, I just feel like I'm just faking all this. And no, no, it's just God just saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the doors. You know, of my life, I've seen God open those doors. I saw God bring things out of my life I didn't even know was in my life, you know? I can go from a 20-minute message and now you're like, okay, land the plane, land the plane, land the plane, you know? We got to, we, the next service is on its way. Some of you are like, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. But it's like, because he works in our life. It's not all in you. If it's all in you, then you don't need God. You don't need faith. You don't need trust. And, but then the, the other thing is then you're just relying on your, your own ability, which has limitations, but God's ability has unlimited potential and what he wants to do in and through your life because what he does in your life not just affects you but affects somebody else and affects you generationally I mean I, I look at my, my own family I'm so grateful for someone in our family making the decision to follow Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior it has had a ripple effect through my through uh, generations in our family see maybe you don't have that but maybe you will be that maybe you're the one that's going to leave descendants and, and, and that their lives will be touched and changed because of your decision to follow Jesus, your choice to follow him. Because that's the faithfulness of what God can do. So what was it that qualified Gideon to be called a mighty warrior? That simple little phrase, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. I want to tell you, the Lord is with you. Amen? He hasn't abandoned you. He is with you. See, see the, the presence of the Lord is in your life will bring the best out in you. When, when, when God is with you, he gives you the power to do what needs to be done. He gives you the ability to move beyond your limitations. There's so many limitations. I'm like, how in the world am I going to get through this? Oh, how? God is with you. That's how. He's going to see you through. He gives us the certainty that he is with us. He's going to follow through. You know, as I said, I'm, I'm standing here today still pastoring because he, he, because I, he's called me. You know, I, I look at the statistics of, of pastors in, in churches it, they last about four to five years on an average. I mean, that's probably what I thought I would probably last way back then. And I look back, I'm like, I'm still here. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, you're still here. And look, I, and I'm not saying it that way. But, thank you. But, I, but just looking back, I never dreamt in a million years I would still be here. You know, if there was an exit plan 30 years ago, 34 years ago, I would have taken it. But God didn't leave any exit plans because he's got a plan. So I'm just, I'm saying to challenge you. It's like the fact is this, that, you know, sometimes, you know, we look at a situation and think there's no way that God's going to see me through in this. But he's faithful. Because, but 
I know the only way that I've gotten through this is because he is with me. And the only way you're going to get through and do all that God has called you to do in your life, in your family, your career, or God's calling on your life is the fact that he is with you. And you believe it. You actually believe it. Like I said in the very beginning, we say, oh, yeah, I believe that God is everywhere. But do you believe he's right here? When you walk to the door, that he's walking through the door with you. When you go to Walmart, he's, he's in the line with you in Walmart. Do, do, you, do you believe? Do you know? Do you understand that he is with you? See, you say, well, what does this have to do with me? What does it have to do with you in your life? Well, God wants you to know that no matter where you are and what's happening, he is with you. And so I have to make it a point in my life and in your life to embrace it. I need to declare it. God, you are with me here. Amen. You are with me today when I, when I deal with that work situation. You are with me when I deal with that relationship issue that I need to deal with. You are with me today. When I, when I have to deal with the things, whatever my, is on my list for today, God. You are with me. He's right here with me right now. And before Jesus ascended into heaven, and so his, his, uh, after his resurrection, his last words to his disciples and his followers were this. Matthew 28, 20. I am with you every day, even until the end of time. I am with you every day, every day. Every day means the day that feels like he's not there. He says, I'm there. And so many times we, well, I just don't feel it. And, you know, I, I said this from day one. I think it's, I think it's just maybe how I'm wired and my logical thinking and whatever, my mind, but and how I kind of view things is the fact that it, it's, our, our feelings will lie to us. Your feelings and your thoughts will, will, will try to convince you that something's not what it is. And we talk about the fact that God is with me. Man, your, the devil's going to throw those fiery darts at you to tell you that God's not with you. He abandoned you a long time ago. He dropped you a long time ago. He is, God has canceled you out. No, he hasn't. There's nothing that you can do for God to cancel you. You can't cancel. Even, even when you may run away from him, the fact is this, his love is still there. He's that prodigal father, son's father that's standing there waiting. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that's saying, I will never leave you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. It's not something that you can always feel. And it's not something you can always see. But it is something that you can know. K-N-O-W. That I can know it like I know my name. If someone came up to you and said, well, you know, that's not really your name. Your name is not really that. I'm like, yes, it is. You know, listen, Fred was not my name that I would, I mean, it's, a, it's more of a heritage name. There's a lot of Freds in my dad's side of family. You go to a family reunion, someone says, Fred, 10 people turn around. It's like that kind of thing. It's like literally, that was, I mean, it was like, I mean, as a young kid, we were at a family reunion and there was all kind of Freds in the family. You know, I don't know, I don't know, what, the, I don't know what happened there, but there was a lot of other names they could have chosen, but everybody had, all these people have Fred or Frederick, I should say. And so the fact is this, that, you know, I know that's my name. Sometimes I don't, do I, do I, I don't know what a Fred feels like, but there's times that I wish it was something else. You know, I, I, not now, but, you know, it is what it is now. This time it's too late, it's there. But, you know, but, you know, a lot of times before I didn't like that. I was like, oh, I don't like Fred, you know. And, but just because I didn't feel that or wanted that didn't change the fact that that's my name, that's who I am. That's my identity, that's my, that name that identifies me. And so there's times that you're going to look like, I don't feel like a Christian. I don't feel like I'm saved. I don't feel like this, or I don't feel like that. But it's got to be a point that we, we, we step in and step back and look at the point and say, okay, well, no, this is, this is what the Word of God says. This, this is God's Word. I'm going to believe that. This is, you know, I, I know my name is Fred because I've been called that. That was my parents put that on my birth certificate, and, you know, and that's who I am. And I can sit there and say it's something else, but really it comes to the point that that's who I am. Okay, don't get funny and say, well, you know, you can change your name. Uh, please don't break up my story. I'm trying to make a good point, okay? <laughs> I get what you're saying, but it's the fact that whether you feel like it or not, that's, that's your name is the point I'm trying to say, you know? There's always one in the crowd thinking that, so I'm sure there's probably two in this service, okay? So, because I would probably been one of them if it was me when I was sitting, if I was sitting in your place, I would say, well, just change your name. That's all you do, okay? 
But the fact is that God says, I am with you. you know, I, I, don't, I, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to. I, I just, you guys got five extra minutes. I think I can get this in here. Six, maybe. We'll see. Let me just give you this real quickly. So experiencing God's presence on a daily basis starts with choosing to acknowledge his presence. I choose to acknowledge his presence. Um, daily. Not just when you feel like it. It's not just when it hits me. No matter how you feel or what's happening, it's, it's developing a daily habit uh, of, uh, of nurturing the fact that God is with me. So these are just some practical points I want to just give you real quick. I think there's four, I think, is what I had here. How do we nurture it? We, we nurture it by understanding that we are always in the presence of God. That we, that we acknowledge that we're always in God's presence. Because God is, um, 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 I'm sorry, omnipresent, we're always in his presence. In other words, I don't have to work up some special ritual to get God in my presence. I don't have to, and I'm not saying, I'm not talking about, not, about spending time in God. I'm just simply saying that, you say, well, I don't feel God's presence. I, I, don't, I don't know if he's really in, I don't even know if he knows what's going on in my life. But the reality is that, that you're always in God's presence. So I don't have to do some special, special ritual. I don't have to go to some special pilgrimage to try to find God. God's not lost. He's been with you the whole time. You go on a special pilgrimage, guess what? He's with you as you're going on a special you know, pilgrimage to find him when he's right with you the entire time. Now listen, I'm not diminishing, I say this very clearly, I'm not diminishing when we take that time to get away to just kind of strip us of the stuff that, that allow us, that are keeping us from really experiencing God's presence in a deeper place in our life. But I'm just saying that we understand because people say, well, I just, I, don't, I just don't even know God's here. He's there. And I need to nurture that. I need to know that. I need to understand no matter where I go, I cannot escape his love and his grace and his presence in my life. Okay? Because we are in Christ... And the presence of God has made his home in us. That's what happened as a point of, of this covenant with Jesus is that we don't have to go to a temple where the spirit of God is behind a, 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 um, a curtain and, and have someone, a priest, to go in there and make a sacrifice or petition for us. When Jesus was on the cross, the cross, it talks about the fact it's finished, he said, and the, the temple, that temple that separated everybody from God's presence was ripped in two, showing that God is no longer behind the veil, but now he is there available in your heart, in your spirit, that, that to abide inside of us if we receive him. Because of Christ, he's in us. Amen? I don't have to go find God. God's not lost. Amen? Now, I can experience him in a deeper way. I understand. I, I want to keep saying that because some, I, don't want, I don't want you to miss that. But if I'm trying to find him because I think he's lost, he's not lost. He's still with me. And so the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in my life. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? In other words, that I'm not going to a temple to worship God that's behind the veil. The Holy Spirit's in my life. His presence, God's Holy Spirit is in my life when I invite him into my life. Amen? Second thing is this, is that we, is to, to nurture and understand that we experience the presence of God through his word. Now, you hear us talk about it. You hear me talk about it. You hear different people talk about it. Oh, yeah, I know. We've got to get in the word, the Bible. Yes, absolutely. But we have to. If you want to experience and nurture the presence of God, we've got to get in his word. His word's got to get in us. Hebrews 4.12 says this, the Passion Translation, for we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where spirit and soul, bone and marrow meet. It interrupts and reveals and, I'm sorry, interprets, not interrupts. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. That's what God's word does. It's so powerful that it, that it helps you define and acknowledge what's really going on in your life if we're choosing to listen to what God's saying in his life as well as all that happens. See, when we open up the, the pages of God's word, what are we doing? We're encountering the living, active, speaking God. Do we think of it like that? Not usually. But when we open up his word that God, this is God speaking to me. Think about that. I mean, it's this, this thing that, because we're, it's so common to have a Bible, but you, you go to other countries and, you know, I, I've been to a few that, that they literally would take a Bible and rip the pages in half. I take the, rip the pages out and hand each person in the church a page. 
And they would take that page and they would read it and literally memorize that. They're saying in China, it was very common still to this day, is that they would take it and then they would exchange them when they got back together again. And they would do this in, in un, the underground churches of even in Cuba and the underground churches in China. And when I say underground, they weren't underground. They were just hidden because the, the government was trying to stop the, the message of the gospel going forth. And so the only way they could, they couldn't own a Bible or even in Muslim countries today where they're not allowed. It's, it's illegal to have a Bible. You're not allowed to walk in. I believe Saudi Arabia is one of those still today. That you're not allowed to have a Bible or whatever, however it is. Someone will correct me, I'm sure. But I, I remember talking to a, a Filipino lady that used to come to church that she worked in Saudi Arabia or one of the other Arabic, Arabic countries, and she had it camouflaged. It looked like a regular book, but inside it was the Word of God. And I remember asking her about it, and she says, because I, I can't have this there, so I have to disguise it as something else so I can have and be able to read God's Word. And so... To understand that each time that you're countering the presence of God in a unique way when you open up his word. Because the amazing thing is that you can read the same verse over and over and over again throughout the years and get something even deeper and something else that you didn't have before when you go back and read it. Because the more that you get in, the more that it just opens up the, the message of what God is saying in your life. It's a time for God to speak into your soul and your spirit. Life, hope, revelation, wisdom, knowledge, the words of life that you need. Amen? And the third thing is, is that we experience the presence of God through prayer. We want to encounter God's presence, you got to talk with Him. See, God, the creator of the universe, the king of kings, the one who keeps the planets in the proper orbit around us, wants us to open up our hearts to Him. Wow. To share our burdens, to bring our needs to Him, to ask of Him. He says, bring your petitions to him, he says in Hebrews. That's what God wants you to do. E.M. Bounds, an author, said this. He says, nothing is well done without prayer for the simple reason that it leaves God out of the account. In other words, anything that you do that doesn't involve God is not very good. It's not going to have his power and his presence in the middle of it. Amen. When we pray, God takes action. He heals the sick, he meets the needs, he gives peace, he, he, he fills us with wisdom and empowers us to overcome the sin and temptation of life. Prayer is literally asking God to come and invade the details of my day. God, I need you to invade my day today. Amen? To meet me. You know what's ahead of me. God, you're gonna meet me there. And the last thing is this. The other way that we experience God's presence and that we need to nurture that is to experience the presence of God when we fellowship together with, with believers. So when, when, when I'm with other believers, whether it's just in, in personal time and you're going out lunch or, or just what, talking with or in a, in a circle or in a church service like this or that, that in those times of being able to connect together. Matthew 18, 20 says, Jesus said, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Now, does that mean that God's not with you when you're by yourself? Of course he does. But what it's saying is that when we gather, when we pray, when we sing, when we worship, when we share the word together, we experience the presence of God in a way that we simply cannot experience by ourselves. It's different. It's, we're, with God's, we're in God's presence, but it, there's a difference to what God does in the, in the koinonia, the, the gathering together, the collective together with the same mind, the same heart, the same spirit. Koinonia is the word fellowship. It's in the Greek. And you talk about fellowship is, you know, we think fellowship is just let's eat, okay, some time for food. But, and you can have food, but, but it's a time of coming, bonding together, same mind, same likeness, same passion, same desire of knowing God. When we come together, God does something corporately within our life whether it's in a setting like this whether it's in a small group setting like a circle or a women's ministry or the different men's ministry things we do or the collective of the young adults or whether it's just with you and a friend that's coming together praying together talking about life together God's presence is right there amen those are some ways how we nurture God start each day with embracing and declaring God is with me today when I start my day, Father, I thank you that you are with me today. When I walk out the door, God, you are with me in everything I do. Give me wisdom today. Give me understanding. Help me discern the day ahead of me. Let me be a light in the ways that I go today, Father God. See, I'm acknowledging and declaring, God, you're with me. Not just when I'm at church. Not when I just feel spiritual. Amen? <laughs> 
I just feel the Holy Spirit. Yes, there's times that you can feel tangible aspect, but you know what? He's there with you, don't, whether you don't feel it or not. Amen? When you just feel like, ah, blah, just you, when you just feel like, oh, you, you. <laughs> okay, me. He's there because that's who he is. Father, I thank you today. Let your word just challenge us to know that you truly never leave us, never forsake us, that you're always with us. Father, that we know that even when our, when our life and our mind and our heart and everything around us tells us that you're, you're not hearing, you're not with me, Father, I'm going to acknowledge that you are with me, Father. I'm going to declare over my life that, that you are here right now, Father God, that you're directing my steps and directing my heart and directing my life. You're leading me in every step that we take. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that just as your word goes forth, let it just challenge our heart to literally look at every single day as a day that when I stop, step outside of my, our door, that we're stepping with you along the way, that you are with us, never leaving us, never forsaking us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, if you need prayer, we love to pray. If you have an amazing week, God bless you.